I'm going to take to talk about some measures of non-compactness and their applications. Measures of non-compactness are very useful tools in functional analysis. They can be applied, for instance, in metric fixed point theory, the characterization of compact operators between Banach spaces and the study of differential and integral equations. What we are going to do is the following. We present an axiomatic introduction to measures of non-compactness of bounded subsets of complete metric spaces. This is as I see how it was originally introduced, an alternative axiomatic approach by Banach and Goebel for measures of non-compactness in Banach spaces. We also give a study of measures of non-compactness of operators between Banach spaces and some of their properties. And finally, we apply some results to the characterizations of compact linear operators between BK spaces and the solvability of integral equations. <clears throat> now I give a short introduction. Compactness and measures of non-compactness play an important role in fixed point theory. But there are cases when the operators are not compact and the results have to be extended to non-compact operators. The most important application of a measure of non-compactness is Darbo's fixed point theorem. This uses Kuratowski's measure of non-compactness alpha. And Darbo's theorem is a generalization of Schauder's fixed point theory, theorem. Here is Darbo's fixed point theory theorem. If C is a non-empty bounded, closed and convex subset of a Banach space X and alpha is the Kuratowski measure of non-compactness of X. Then if F is a map from C to C, which is continuous such that there exists a constant C in zero one with that condensing property one one, then F has a fixed point in C. The following remark holds true or is, is important. Darbo's fixed point theory theorem generalizes from compact sets to bounded and closed sets in infinite dimensional Banach spaces. I will give a short overview about the most important fixed point theorems because they are a good motivate. I think they're a good motivation for introducing measures of non-compactness. So we all know what the definition of a fixed point is. And if F is a function from a non-empty set X into itself, then calligraphic F of F of small F is the set of all fixed points of the small of the function F. So the best known metric fixed point theorem is Banach's fixed point theorem, also con called the contractive mapping. And this is the contraction in 2.1. Now, if you remember uh, Darbo's fixed point theorem, structurally the uh, condensing condition was rather similar. And the Banach's fixed point theorem is as follows. Every contraction from a complete metric space into itself, into itself has a unique fixed point. We know that if the contractive condition in 2, 2, 2, 1 in the, of the function f in theorem 2, 2 is relaxed to the so-called non-expansive maps where the constant c is equal to 1, then Banach's fixed point theorem need no longer hold true. There's also the important Brouwer's fixed point theorem. Every continuous map from the closed unit ball of Rn into itself has a fixed point. Now, uniqueness cannot be expected in theorem 2.3, the above one. Even more is general for every, uh, is true for every non-empty closed subset F of the closed unit ball of Euclidean Rn, there exists a function 
small f from this from the unit ball to the itself such that the set of fixed points of these functions is e is equal to the given set f now Schauder's fixed point theorem generalizes Browder's fixed point theorem and it can be used to prove Peano's existence theorem it says that every continuous map from a non-empty compact and convex subset C of a Banach space X into C has a fixed point. Now, the, we will take a close look at, uh, or a short look at finite dimensional case versus infinite dimensional case. If X is a finite dimensional Banach space and F goes from zero to cross the zero t cross x to x is a bounded function then by Peano's theorem the initial value problem this one has at least one solution this statement does not hold in infinite dimensional spaces and here is the remark concerning this Giordani provided an example that shows that Peano's theorem does not extend to infinite dimensional Banner spaces in general. And Kakutani provided an example that sh shows that Schauder's fixed point theorem does not extend to closed and bounded subsets instead of compact subsets of infinite dimensional Banner spaces in general. Now we should come to the introduction of measures of non-compactness. So we give an axiomatic introduction of the concept of measures of non-compactness in complete metric spaces. The definitions of the kuratowski hausdorff and separation or Istatescu measure of non-compactness. These are the most important, the most uh, often used or most frequently used uh, measures of non-compactness and the properties need, need, needed in the proofs of the fixed point theorems by Dabo and Dabo Sadowski. The latter is, an, is a generalization of Dabo's original fixed point theory. There's a lot of a great number of textbooks and monographs, which you may be interested if you want to work in, in measures of non-compactness, I give you a list here. Okay. okay. So I, I'd like to start with a few historical remarks. The first measure of non-compactness denoted by alpha, was defined and studied by Kuratowski in 1930. Then for 25 years, nothing really ha important happened in the development or application of this measure of non-compactness. But in 1955, Darbo used the function alpha to, provide, to prove his fixed point theorem, which we already had. And this is an important generalization of Schauder's fixed point theorem, which is theorem 2.4, which we had a look at. And this Schauder's fixed point theorem includes the existence part of Banner's fixed point theorem. The ball or Hausdorff measure of non-compactness chi was introduced and studied by Goldenstein, Gochberg, and Marcus in 1957 and 1968. There's some Russian uh, references. Apparently, Goldenstein, Gochberg, and Marcus were not aware of Kuratowski's and Dabo's work. And it is surprising from my point of view that Davos theorem was almost never noticed and applied until in the 1970s when mathematicians working in functional analysis operator theory and differential equations started to apply Davos theorem and develop the theory connected with measures of non-compactness. So as far as I know that 
concerning axi the axiomatic introduction of measures of non-compactness, the notion of measure of non-compactness was originally introduced in complete metric spaces. And an axiomatic introduction can be found in the three, uh, among other things, in the three uh, monographs listed below. So it is basically, it's very simple. The definition is the following. Let XD be a complete metric space and, space and calligraphic M sub X denote the class of bounded subsets of X. Then a function phi from these bounded subsets into zero infinity is called a measure of non-compactness if it satisfies three very simple conditions for all bounded sets. The first one is the regularity condition. The second one is the invariance under closure. And the third is the semi-additivity. And the number phi of Q is called the measure of non-compactness of the set Q. Then from these three simple axioms, we can uh, conclude the following basic properties of an measure of a measure of non-compactness. This is 3.1, the monotonicity, 3.2, that the measure of non-compactness of an intersection of two sets is less than or equal to the minimum of the two um, measures of non-compactness. Then the non-singularity and important Cantor's generalized intersection property, if Qn is a decreasing sequence of non-empty closed sets in the bounded, on the bounded subsets of X, such that the limit of, the me of their measures of non-compactness tends to zero, then the intersection of all these sets is compact and not empty. This is one of the two important essential properties which are needed in the proof of Darbo's fixed point theorem. And here is the, are the definitions of the Kuratowski measure and the Hausdorff measure of non-compactness. The Kuratowski measure of non-compactness is the map alpha from the bounded sets of a, a complete metric space into zero infinity with the pro, such that Alpha of Q is the infimum of all positive, positive epsilon such that Q can be um, covered by a finite number of sets which, which have diameter less than epsilon. And the Hausdorff measure of non-compactness is defined similarly where chi of Q is the infimum of all positive positive epsilon such that Q has a finite epsilon net. And then there is, I, will, I would just like to mention the uh, Istratesco or separation me measure of non-compactness. We will not really deal with this anymore, but I, I included it for uh, completeness sake. And the separation measure of non-compactness is technically rather difficult to handle. And here is a relation between alpha, a, chi, and beta. So the function alpha, chi, and beta are measures of non-compactness in the sense of the original definition. So they satisfy the four um, uh, conditions, three, one, two, three, four. And they are also equivalent in the following sense. Chi of Q is less or equal to beta of Q is less or equal to alpha of Q is e less or equal to times chi of Q. But there are also studies on in inequivalent measures of non-compactness and they can be found in the first two papers mentioned here, for instance. For the Darboszowski theorem, we need uh, the, the concept of phi condensing operators. 
So we assume that X and Y are complete metric spaces, phi and psi be measures of non-compactness on X and Y and F goes from a subset D of X into Y and is an operator. Then F is said to be phi psi condensing with constant K greater zero or simply phi psi condensing if F is continuous and satisfies this inequality. In particular, if X and Y and phi is equal to psi, we simply say that F is chi, K phi condensing very similar to that condition one one we had in the original uh, double fixed point theorem. If K is equal to one, then F is said to be phi condensing. And if the, if less than is replaced by less than or equal to, then F is called phi psi contractive with constant K greater zero. So on the following, is a generalization of Darbo's fixed point theorem. If X is a Banner space, phi is a measure of non-compactness which is invariant under the passage of to the convex hull. C is not empty, bounded, closed and convex in X and F from C to C is a phi condensing operator, then F has a fixed point. And this uh, theorem does not extend to one contractive operators where the constant k is equal to one. Here's an example. So, so far we talked about measures of non-compactness in, in complete metric spaces. Now we take a look at measures of non-compactness in Banach spaces. And some measures of non-compactness, such as, for instance, alpha and chi, they, several, they satisfy, satisfy several important conditions connected to the linear structure of Banner spaces. And they, given, they give rise to an alternative axiomatic approach of measures of non-compactness in Banner spaces by Banner and Goebel, this book, or by Akmerov, Kamensky, et Ali. This is this can be found, for instance, in this book. So the, the properties are the following. Uh, sublinearity for one, translation invariance for two, absolute homogeneity for three, and invariance under the passage of the convex hull. Here, co of Q denotes the convex hull of the set Q. If X is infinite dimensional and BX and SX denote the open unit ball and the unit sphere in X, then alpha of B of X is equal to alpha of S of X is equal to two, which you would expect. And chi of B of X, BX is equal to chi of SX is equal to one, also something you would expect. And there are a few uh, important properties of the separation measure of non-compactness, which I would like to mention for completeness space, uh, uh, completeness sake. The proofs are technically rather challenging. So beta is also sublinear. Beta is invariant under the passage to the convex hull for four. But for beta, but for beta of B of sub X, there is no general formula independent of the space, such as for five, for alpha and chi. For instance, if two is less than P is less than in infinity, then B uh, beta, this should be beta BLP is two to the my two to the one by P. There is a beta missing here, a beta of this, sorry. So Banach and Goebel gave the following, uh, following axioms for a measure of non-compactness on a Banach space X. So 
such a function psi is a measure of non-compactness if it satisfies the conditions invariance under closure, monotonicity, invariance under the passage to the convex hull, then that this family is contained in the family of all relatively compact subsets of X. This should be compared with M and C1, the first condition in our original axiomatic introduction. Here is the something you should compare to generalize counters generalized intersection property. Then there is the con convexity condition three. This, these are uh, Banach and Goebbels axioms of um, a measure of non-compactness in Banach spaces. And we already know from our results that the Kuratowski and Hausdorff measures alpha and chi are measures of non-compactness in the sense of Banach and Goebel as well. The family kernel of u, mu described in I is called the kernel, kernel of the measure of non-compactness mu. And the measure mu is said to be sublinear if it satisfies the conditions for one and for three. So here, obviously, this is not very nice that sublinearity uh, appears in two different meanings. A very important uh, result is the following because it gives an explicit estimate for the measure of non compactness in a Banach space with Schauder basis, namely the following. If X is a Banach space with a Schauder basis BK, then the function mu defined here satisfies the following inequality for every bounded set Q. One by A mu of Q is less than or equal to chi of Q is less than or equal to mu of Q. And that number A is the basis constant. And here are two uh, examples, an application of the house of measure of non-compactness for Q, a bounded set in the bounded sets in the set of continuous functions on AB and the LP functions of LB. They can be found in the book by Akmarov, Kamensky et Ali. Now we should have a look at measures of non-compactness of operators. Now we measure the non-compactness of operators between Banner spaces. And here is a definition very useful, should remind you of the previously introduced condensing properties. If mu one and mu two are measures of non-compactness on the Banner spaces X and Y respect, and an operator, then an operator T from X to Y is said to be mu one, mu two bounded if T of every bounded set in X is a bounded set in Y. And there exists a real number, positive number K such that mu two of T of Q is less than or equal to K of mu one of Q for each bounded set Q in X. If an operator T is mu one, mu two bounded, then norm T sub mu one, mu two is defined by this expression. And it is called the mu one, mu two operator norm of T or simply the measure of non-compactness of T, of the operator T. And if mu one is equal to mu two is equal to mu, then we write this for short. There is a very nice result uh, for the measure of non-compactness, Hausdorff measure of non-compactness of a bounded linear operator from X to Y, where X and Y are Banach spaces, namely this identities, these identities. And here is some more, is, Another result, what is most important is the 
result in five one. If X and Y are Banach spaces and T is a bounded linear operator from X to Y, then T, the, the Hausdorff measure of non-compactness of the operator chi is equal to zero if and only if T is a compact operator from X to Y. And now finally, we would like to give a, take a look at a few applications. So this is joint, this concerns joint uh, recent work with my colleague Rakotchevic from Niche. It's about the generalized Hahn space HD, the determination of the multiplier of HD and HD that the bounded linear operator given by the generalized Cesaro matrix T is bounded and linear. And we give another generalization of Darbo's fixed point theorem. So just the, the reminder for you, some uh, notations omega L infinity C, C0, phi are the standard notations for the sets of all complex bounded convergent null and finite sequences. BS, CS, L1 and BV are the sets of all bounded convergent and absolutely convergent series. And the, this is the set of all bound, series of bounded variation. And BV0 is the intersection of BV and C0. Then for each n in n natural number, e, sat n, uh, e upper n is the sequence which has one, ter which has term one in place n and zero otherwise. Maybe you are not so familiar with the concept of a BK space, where a BK space X is a Banach sequence space with continuous coordinates PN, where PN of X is the nth uh, term of the sequence X. And a BK space X, which contains the finite sequences, is said to have a K if every sequence has a unique representation as the limit of its M sections. Then the Hahn space uh, HD, if DK is a monotone increasing unbounded sequence of positive reals, then for every sequence X, we define the sequence of forward differences by these terms. And then the generalized Hahn space was defined by Gauss as HD is equal to this set intersected with C0. And if DK is equal to K for all K, then HD is equal to H, which is the original Hahn space introduced by Hahn. And if D is the constant sequence one, then H sub E is BV. Zero. Some facts about uh, HD. Since HD is a BK space with a K, here's the reference. Every operate, bounded linear operator from HD into itself is given by an infinite matrix such that L of X is equal to AX, where AX is this sequence, and each term of the sequence is defined as this. And conversely, if a, a x is in H D for all x in H D, then L A defined by this for all x in L D is a bounded linear operator from H D to H D. And here is the characterization of the set of B H D. So B H D L is a bounded linear operator from H D into itself, only if and only if A X is in, is equal to L X is in H D for all X in H D, and this is the case if and only if the sequences in the columns of A tend to zero, 
and this quantity is finite. And actually, if L is a bounded linear operator from HD onto into itself, then this quantity is equal to the operator norm of L. Oh, so, and here is, um, here is a formula, an explicit inequality for the for the Hausdorff measure of non-compactness of an operator L in BHD, namely this one. And then we can conclude that L is a, is a compact uh, operator from HD into itself if and only if the limit as L tends to infinity of this quantity is equal to zero. And we can apply this easily to determine the multiplier of HD in HD. The multiplier of X in Y is the set of all Z such that the term-wise multiplied sequence Z by X is in Y for all X in X. And then we get the following result that the multiplier of HD on HD is this is given, is characterized or is given by this set. And we can apply our theorem 6.2 and example 6.3 to obtain two known results by these two mathematicians. To understand this, we have to take a look at the Cesaro operator C sub T on omega for T in zero one, which is the triangle matrix where the entries are given by this expression. And the, the example as, uh, as our application is the following, if T is between zero and exclusive one, then the operator given by that matrix CT is a bounded linear operator on the classical Hahn space. And one more generalization is the following. Uh, if L Example 6.5, if lambda k is a decreasing sequence of positive real number converging to zero, and d of lambda is the diagonal matrix having the terms of lambda on the diagonal, then the corresponding uh, operator L sub d lambda is a compact operator on H, from HD into HD. Now the final uh, application is a generalization of the contraction. So we introduced the H set X contraction in that paper. And this can, is used to uh, prove a generalization of Darbo's fixed point theorem and we can apply and we applied this to the existence of solutions of a functional Null integral equation of Volterra type. So the definition is the following. Let X be a Banach space and phi be a measure of non-compactness on the bounded sets of X, which is invariant under closure and convex hull. Regular, that means that phi of Q is zero if and only if Q is relatively compact and semi-homogeneous. Furthermore, let H go from the positive reals into the positive reals and be uh, let this be a strictly increasing map such that for each sequence a n of positive real numbers the limit as n tends to infinity a n is equal to zero this is if the case if and only if the limit n tends to infinity h of a n is equal to zero then a map x from x, a t from x to x is said to be a countable h set contraction if there exists a number positive number tau such that for all countable q bounded sets in x 
this implication holds the bottom of the page. So then there is a remark, every H contraction is a condensing map and also every phi condensing map T with phi of T of Q is unequal to zero for every countable set Q is an H set contraction. And finally, the generalization of Darboe's fixed point theorem is the following. Let C be a non-empty bounded closed and convex subset of a Banach space X phi be a measure of non-compactness as above, and t from x to x be a continuous h contraction, then t has a fixed point theorem, a fixed point. And here is the application. So if we apply the previous theorem, then we get a result on the sol solvability of the nonlinear integral equation given here in the space BC R2 plus and it consists of ah, all real telephone to scan again. On R plus and the norm of is defined in the usual name. And these are this is the theorem spelled out. This is all these theorems are rather technical and need many, many conditions. And this is all. Thank you very much for your attention.